age 36. While Lois reported her observations, the niece had thoughts of her own. She heard all of this before, but it was expected of her to ask for the information. Fact is, Lise did have thoughts about her charges, thoughts unacceptable to the way, blasphemous thoughts about the coldness of indoctrination and the impropriety of the standard teaching method. Her feelings that the charges were humans too had forced her to devise her own procedures, procedures that had been questioned by the council during an inquisition, then begrudgingly allowed. The noted silence demanded the next question, which Lenise supplied. When did this happen? Moments ago on my 7 a.m. rounds. Thank you, Lenise inserted at the proper time. I trust that you've been to the clinic, she added. Lois nodded. They sent me here. That'll be all. The toilet matrix nodded and backed out of the room. Anise watched the door close and then locked it with her remote before pressing the print command on her computer. The printer spit out a picture of Anise's new charge. She turned the machine off and brought the photo back to bed with her. Sitting against the silk pillows of her four-poster bed, she placed the photo next to her. The paper felt as flimsy and one-dimensional as the impending arrangements. Anise had always hated the ways procedures and liked to take the time to study her charge before she met him. She entered a few digits into the panel of her headboard and a drawer pushed out from the nightstand next to her. Reaching into it, she took out a porcelain cigarette case. Flicking it open, she noticed that there were only three left. She rolled her eyes. As she remembered her missed appointment with her connection, Fedora, and made a mental note not to forget this one. She pushed the room's atomizer on, then she flipped the switch on a vacuuming ashtray. Lighting her cigarette and indulging in a long drag, she blew the smoke into swirling rings of gray before wafting the cloud towards the drawer. Sitting there, smoking a while, thinking and daydreaming out her balcony wall windows, she watched the puffy pink cumulus breeze across the lavender sky. It was a perfect day for a picnic before meeting with Fedora, but now the initial appointment with her charge was imminent. Indoctrination, she exhaled, blowing the word from her mouth in a burst of smoke. She buzzed her personal assistant, Stephanie. Yes, my queen, came the woman's voice from the intercom. Connect me with Dr. Diana. Call was placed and an answer by the doctor's assistant, Julie, who connected the niece with the doctor. Dr. Diana, the voice trailed into the room. Matrix Diana, this is the niece. I'm calling to, to make the initial appointment with a charge, Terry. Yes, the niece, I've been awaiting your call. The appointment has been made for 10 a.m. today. 10 o'clock? Yes, my queen. While the toilet matrix was briefing you, the breakfast matrix filed a report also. She'll be leaving here shortly to come to you. Lenise nearly choked as she lit her second cigarette, not wanting a servant matrix to enter her room so soon after she had smoked. There is no need. Tell her to resume her normal schedule. I will be in your office at 10.15 so that I arrive after your examination. Have a charge waiting for me in the interview room. I see, came the doctor's knowing reply. I suspect that we'll be going by your personal procedures then and not by the prescribed methods. We've been going by my personal procedures for years. I don't know, didn't know that I'd constantly need to explain them to you. Follow my orders according to my plans. Yes, of course, the doctor became business, having been put in her place. She asked for the number sequence that would secure the charges released from safe room. Denise gave her the memorized code and dismissed the call. Glancing over the charges picture, she went ahead and picked it up to study it closer. 
Terry's face did not harbor the innocent eyes and showed an expression that she had come to expect. The telltale line of naivete wasn't there either, and that line of innocence that Lenise had always felt guilty for erasing. She took a drag from her cigarette and exhaled the smoke across the blue picture. The, pro the projected image that glared back at her wasn't one of sorrow for disillusionment. It was one of jeering domination. Ridiculous, she exclaimed, flinging her own disillusionment across the room. The picture landed against one of the two chairs that was under her dinette table. Terry's face sneering back at her. You are a charge, like all the other charges that I've had, she screamed at the picture, grinding the words into her ashtray and slamming the drawer back into the nightstand. I will steal your innocence as surely as I will take your virginity, she declared, climbing back down from her bed to pick up the photo. Crumbling it into a ball, she tossed it into a cycling can as she dismissed the charge's individuality and left her bedroom to prepare for the initial interview. The wadded photo slowly expanded, revealing a Cheshire grin. The fetching matrix Darlene scurried down the castle corridor toward the hall of safe rooms. It was initiation day for her charge, Terry, and the thought titillated her. No serving matrix knew the exact procedures, but there were stories. During breaks or lunch, they often giggled about the things they had heard, described how the, the charge would be massaged with oils everywhere on his body, including that place, about how the rubber would make that place grow big and stiff, and how finally it would make the charge want to lay with the queen. Sometimes Darlene envied the Queen's privileges, and sometimes she thought the Queens were fools to want to, or correctly have to, lie with the charges. Nevertheless, if the stories were true, that meant the charge would put that place up inside the Queen. That thought both disgusted Darlene and aroused her. Her hurried pace made her tingling breasts bounce, and the bouncing made her nipples hard as it rubbed against her thin serving gown. In order to calm herself, she slowed her pace, thinking about her charge when he was a child. Terry had been placed into safe room when Darling was sent to retrieve him and bring him to the clinic. She'd been his fetching matrix ever since. When she first saw the three-year-old, she instantly fell in love. Dark curls surrounded his round, chubby face, and his little body was so pudgy and pink that she wanted to squeeze him, but contact was forbidden to serving matrixes. To Terry, Darlene was a fetching matrix. To Terry, to Darlene, Terry was her son. Most of the serving matrix felt this way about their charges, but would never verbalize these feelings to anyone. By the time that Darlene reached Terry's door, Initiation Day filled her with contempt for the Queens. She was totally repulsed by their actions. Entering the code to release the door, she froze at the sight of the torn up safe room. She was horrified to believe that she was about to find an injured and bleeding Terry until she saw him sleeping in a nest of wall stuffing. She didn't want to, but she had to agree that a domination was necessary to keep charges from hurting themselves. Terry, she tried to say with quiet authority, but she was having difficulty disguising the compassion in her voice. It is time. The sleeping charge woke up and studied the face that accompanied his voice. Recognized her to be the fetching matrix meant that they were going to see Dr. Matrix. This acknowledgement came heaviness in his groin because of the impending examination. Go away, he demanded, and curled back into his protective ball. Terry, I have this for you, Darling said, holding up a black loincloth. It's called clothing. 
you put one leg in, then the other, and then pull the clothing up. Terry stirred. He liked the sound of clothing. It would hide his private thing. Without uncurling, he reached his arm behind him, the fetching matrix through the clothing towards his outstretched hand. You will turn away, he said. It was not a request. Darlene complied. When he was ready, he told her so, and they left the destroyed safe room forever.